Hi guys, this is a uh, quick demonstration of the, the features that I've managed to put into the rack planner that I'm working on. I'm currently at version 1.12. So what you're looking at on screen at the moment is a, a representation of a Dotfer LC6 case. We've got uh, two rows, 84 HP rows of Euro rack. What we can do, I hope you can see this okay, we click on add module at the top. We can go to our standard rack planner modules as used on Doug CL's rack planner and pick a module and pick the peg it drops in nicely once it's been dropped in you can move it around the rack by clicking and dragging and as you'll see on each side you can see how many HP you've got available the green box that you can see means that it's clear to drop in that place so if I let go of the mouse here it snaps into position likewise here. If I go outside the rack it drops back to the last place it was at. Okay, so let's add another module in. Let's get a VCO of some kind. Oh, this man. Okay, so we've now got two modules in the rack. If we try and drop a module somewhere it can't go, you'll see the box turns red and the little rulers underneath show that it wants 17 HP but it's only got 14. So what's going to happen when I let go of this is it's going to be nudged across slightly into position. If there wasn't enough room for it, and if I'm trying to drop it in here for instance, you can see that we need 17 but we've only got 12, it jumps back to the nearest place. If there's nowhere on the row it can go, it would have jumped back to where it originally came from. Let's go ahead and add in another module. So you can see how quick it is to build up and move around. What we've also got on here is zooming using the mouse wheel. If we zoom, if we push the mouse wheel forward, we zoom out, pull it back, we zoom in. Doing that allows you to get the full detail of the images captured in the in the rack XML files, and you can continue to work at whatever zoom setting you are. So even if I zoom right out, I can still move them around. So let's have a look at patching. Okay, so let's say I wanted to take the envelope output from the blue side of the peg um, to FM the Hertz donor. If I hold down control on the keyboard, the mouse cursor changes from an arrow into a yellow cross. And I can click and drag and drop. So there's one of our first patch cables. And let's say we're going to take the output of that Hertz donor and stick it into the filter at the top. which is going to be FM'd by the other side of the peg. If I can see where it goes. There we go, that's it. So now those patch cables have been put on, there's one, two, three of them. We can still move the modules around. The patch cables move with each module. In the final version, the patch cables won't all be yellow. These are just, just put in there for ease at the moment. Okay, so that's showing the patch cables. The other feature that we've got in here at the moment is the ability to use multiple format racks. If we zoom right out, we'll see that I've already got a few racks down the bottom corner. There they are. So let's pull this one up here and zoom back in again. This is a Bootler rack six wide, six modules wide. And you can see the hole spacing there is different for the Bootler rack than it is on the Euro rack one. There's two holes per module. Whereas the Bootler, sorry, the Euro, there's one per HP. So let's drag a module onto this one. Should we go for 227, wherever it is. There we go. And as before, you can move it around within the rack 
and the number of available slots shows on each side. Now we can move each rack independently on the screen, or we can move them all together. And we can also patch between modules on different racks. So let's take, well I don't know what I'm picking on here to be honest, so let's just take one of the, the patching. One of the sockets on the Buchler and drag it across to another socket on the Euro. Just for demonstration purposes, I've absolutely no idea what that hole does. But anyway, now as we move the racks around, you'll see that the patch cable stays in the right position. If we move the module within the rack, the patch cable stays in the right position. And they all work really nicely together. Let's go and zoom out and find the other racks. We've got here a frac rack. And this is a dot com one. They're, all, they're both small, just to illustrate the, the way that these work together. So let's get back in there. I'm just going to put a. What should we put on this one? VCS. So there's a frac module. We're also going to put something in the dot com. Let's just put some malts in there. And let's put an oscillator in there as well. See how it, when you drop it, it drops it in the nearest position. Drop it on this side, pushes it left, drop it on that side, pushes it right. The other thing that we've got, another function, is called free drop. If I turn free drop on, it allows me to position modules wherever I like. And it indicates that there's an overlap by this yellow shading. It's useful for if you've got a full rack and you want to move the modules around. Obviously you can't if they're, if they're all trying to jump to the nearest free space. This allows you to overlap them. If I zoom out and show you that happening on the Euro rack as well. If I move the filter up on top of the Hertz, you see you'll notice that the drop area, the drop zone, this bit, is white. It's white because we're in the free drop mode. Whereas in the when free drop mode was off, it was either red or green. It just means you can put things anywhere you want. Turn it back on again and it'll revert to the behaviour it was doing before. Let's just patch the dot com across. That was a bad shot. Okay, so that's all the, all the racks are patched together now. Oop. To move a rack around you, I'd have to grab a free, free space or the rack border. Obviously if you go on a module it's not going to move the rack. That's all for now. Another video come when I've got some more features in there. But I hope you like what you see so far. Thanks very much for watching.